Hello guys, it is me, the Tank Index here, and today we're going to be talking about the literal land ship, the K-Wagen or the JGK Wagen, also known as the Großkampfwagen. This tank is definitely absolutely disgusting. Um, it is essentially a uh, destroyer, you know, a naval destroyer, but with treads and on land. So let's just get into it. So starting with the history. In June of 1917, even before the A7Vs have completed, the German War Ministry requested a new super heavy breakthrough tank. Yes, they wanted a tank heavier than the A7V, which is already a giant design. It was designed by Joseph Vollmer, who probably sounds familiar by now, as Germany's prime tank designer, and a Captain Vega. On June 28th, the War Ministry approved the design they came up with and requested 10 examples which is already an insane number to want. The original weight was already an insane 165 tons, but by shortening the, the length, they decreased it to a very slightly less ludicrous 120 tons. Notice the slightly. Two prototypes were nearly finished by the end of the war, which were specifically requested by General Paul von Hindenburg. I guess he thought that's something they needed. Um. Due to its size and weight, it would um, have been assembled on the front with multiple pieces being transferred by a rail line, though German rail lines by the end of the war were meh, and officially it was called the Grosskampfwagen, which made sense because this is an absolutely gross and disgusting design. So it had a massive 120 ton weight with a 27 man crew. Yeah, remember the A7B? That only had an 18-man crew, okay? This was absolutely insane. It would have had 30 millimeter armor, uh, so around the A7B everywhere, four 77 millimeter guns, and seven MG-08 machine guns. So basically, it would be a moving artillery piece. Um, the crew would have been a commander, two drivers, a signaler, an artillery officer, 12 artillery men, eight machine gunners, and two mechanics. Originally, early phase of the tank would have incorporated flamethrowers, which I would love to see this thing in battle with flamethrowers. That would be pretty awesome. Um, though this was scrapped for obvious reasons. Um, Raib, as it was called, was nearly completed by the end of the war, but never left the factory and was made sure to be destroyed by the Allies afterwards due to Germany not being able to have tanks. It was Like I said, it was designed with six different parts in mind that could be transported by rail. These included the control room, fighting room, engine room, transmission room, and two sponsors. The commander would give orders via electrical lights, and it would have the fire control system of a destroyer. Like I said, this thing is literally a land ship. The Germans took that phrase very seriously in their tank design. The driver wouldn't even be able to see where he was actually going. He'd just have to sort of guess. Or go up to that little top viewing platform you could see there. But that's where the commander would go, so he couldn't really. The commander would just order him where to go with the driver not being able to actually see. Yeah, that sounds exactly as beneficial as it seems. Now, on to the final assessments. This tank would have been an absolute nightmare in literally every regard. Practically, even at the beginning of the war... The German industry wouldn't be able to handle producing the design in any beneficial numbers. At best, a handful of these tanks, maybe five, would have been completed. In combat, if they didn't even suffer breakdowns first, artillery would have slowly taken them down. It would be taken down by a hundred scratches and not a single one. Eventually, there would be one, one last artillery shell that just the straw that broke the cannon back. And it would just break down and stop moving. Individual artillery blasts, field guns, allied tanks, and breakdowns would have just eventually defeated it. Um, but unlike British tanks, Germany would not be able to lose these in combat, as they couldn't reproduce them as easily. British tanks, oh no, we lost five Mark A's in combat, or sorry, Mark V's in combat. Uh, it's alright, we'll have the, uh, some more by the end of the week. In Germany, on the other hand, if they lost to one of these tanks, it would be a massive loss, so they couldn't afford to. But let's say that they did survive the war, afterwards they would have been useless because there wasn't any trench warfare. Though that's a moot point since they would have been destroyed after the war. But honestly, I think resources would have better been spent producing LK2, like the Kampfwagen against 2, as we discussed in the last video. Or if they wanted a super heavy abrasive tank, just make more A7V use the variant model that was planned and one was made. 
which is basically um, a British tank and a A7V had a baby. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be this for the video. Blah, 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 wow. That's gonna be it for this video. Next time, we will be discussing the Orienwagen, which was an actual German tank produced and used and it just never gets discussed. So I will see you all then.